Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about making a few improvements to Renko's wheelhouse and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. First improvement I made today was actually out on the back deck starting to drill some openings into the wine barrels to use those for storage. So let's go back to them. I am putting screws here into these uh, bands where I intend to cut the openings so that the when I cut the opening along under the band here this sort of I don't even know what they're called plank in the barrel isn't just free floating. I drink Cooper's green and when it comes to being a Cooper I am very green. That's the basic idea. We will uh, get a flap disc and neaten it up and linseed oil and all that good stuff. I feel like aesthetically it could maybe be a little bit wider. No big deal, just drill another hole, two holes, you know, widen it. But structurally, obviously the smaller the better and it was no issue getting them in and out. So maybe I'll just get used to the way it looks. I think I'd rather keep more timber at this stage. I need to do another hole up the top. So these bands will simply be supporting this midsection. I can put more steel in, more timber, whatever. Uh, a shelf might even do it. But in order to seal the sink, I need access to the underside. And then we also need to do the plumbing so that the water goes overboard. It's just gonna go straight overboard. It's purely washing up food dishes. That's all it's gonna get used for maybe fish guts, that kind of thing. Because Peter is coming in the morning to help me with the new carpet, I'm gonna rip the old carpet out now because if there's any nasty surprises, I can deal with them today before we lay the new carpet tomorrow. Here with Pete today. Pete, uh, amongst many other things, uh, put in a huge effort helping to get Renko back in the water on the low tide that day. That so was a while ago now, too. It was a while, so anyway, so definitely uh, part of uh, Renko law and legend. So this is the floor. And while I was off getting busted for not having a life jacket, <laughs> Pete made some measurements. So my thinking is we should cut a piece that is 2075 by 1530, which will cover the whole thing, yep. The whole shadow. Yep. And then we'll start at the back mm -hmm. and we'll work our way forward. Okay. So obviously I've got a lot of steel prep work to do, so that's not gonna just go on top of rust, don't panic. Um, so I've got to grind these down, grind the rust off, treat the rust, paint, let that dry, then we'll glue it on. But if we finish today with a cut piece, oh, I think I'll be very, very happy with that progress. Okay, P has an excellent plan, which I'll let him run you an through. An excellent plan. It is. Okay, so we've marked out on the reverse side of the carpet. Mm -hmm. We've got 2,080 running up. Yep. 1,535 running across, mm -hmm. which we will cut to shape. Also marked out the center line. And that's reasonably important because this is upside down. So port side is starboard, starboard side is port. Yeah. In the cabin, there's actually a ridge running straight down the center where the plates join. So then we can take our measurements and go from the center out. Out each time, yep. And trim out. And ultimately, we need to end up with that. That shape. But I really like your idea of, of just starting from a center line. It's a bit like lofting a boat, taking those measurements out, remembering that it's upside down. Yeah. And that seems like a pretty, yeah, I, I like that system. That's Pete just made another really excellent uh, observation with regards to the fact that this carpet has lines and that is so the, my thinking is if you're standing back of the boat and we look into the cabin if yep. the lines aren't running absolutely dead straight up the center line mm -hmm. those with ocd which doesn't include me you'll have them tracking slightly that yeah way. all right 
just doing a rough cut down so we can test fit the carpet then I'm going to do the nice little curve cut at a later date. We're just having our first test fit at the moment so we've got our back corner as our sort of source of truth. We need this edge here to come over to the wall there so we're just going to do a little cut here to allow that to happen and then we'll just roll that other bit up rather than cutting it off straight away just allows us to bring it across. And just for complication, there's a hatch. Yes, the hatch we need to do with. Right. Yeah, so if we go, go across, right there you go, that line to that line, yep. then we should be able to finally sneak this under the cupboard entirely. And there's a step there because there's a support piece under the cupboard so the carpet saw yes, has to trim to fit the around deck it. The slopes both that way and that, that way. way yeah. Yeah. So now that should... Been doing lots of little odd jobs around the boat this morning. Bit of the uh, Galmet iron eyes on some of the rust that was under the old carpet. Have installed a whole stack of the riv nuts so I can move the scuba cylinder rack to here. And now I'm going to swap this throttle for the twin throttle and gear lever because it has the locking throttle, which is what I want for cruising. All right, let's take the old one out and see what we're up against. The throttle's got the little E-clip on it. Gear selector on the other hand has got a split pin in it. That's the two ends out. Down down below we've got the saddles that secure them. Throttle's got flat heads. Gear selector is Phillips head. In keeping with the boat's theme. So throttle, gear selector. New, uh, these are new cables from you know a year or so ago so not too bad. But the new throttle also comes with new ends. So let's use those as well. Actually, let's just leave that on to the last minute so we don't get them confused. And in the spirit of if anything can go wrong at will, the hole in the dash is the perfectly right size, but this support is in the way with this one because it's wider. Here's the little uh, plinth thing I've made, oh, which is a very tight fit, but that's okay. And that drops down, right. Okay, that went pretty well. Something's going right, that's weird. What we need to do as a part of this is determine the throw required by the gearbox. That's nice and easy, just deal with each half separately. The little parts bag that comes with the controls comes with ends for two sizes of cables. We have these cables. I believe they are 30 series, where the larger perhaps is 40 series. So we'll screw this on to a bit of an arbitrary point at the moment. We can fine tune later. I want my throttle to pull the cable as I push the lever forward. Obviously you could reverse if you wanted. Okay, let's get the cable secured into the unit so we know where we are relative to our throttle plate at the other end. Once you've got your cable locked in, we can adjust this end they've given us to either come back, hang on, let's put the locking nut down, to this hole here which will give us the furthest travel and I can't see why I wouldn't want that for my throttle just means that full throttle may arrive on the governor before we've reached the full travel on the actual lever but with the previous control we actually reached full travel on the lever before we reached full fuel on the governor so I think I'm happy with this okay a little bit of Loctite on the screws so this doesn't all come apart on us just as we're approaching a wharf. 
up the top we've got the uh, cable end on adjusted on the thread to be all the way back at full idle and then we've got a uh, washer pin washer and the retaining plate i've just remembered i've got a proper clevis pin for this at home but if i mark the cable here then i move to forward we're going to measure this distance a bit of an angle i know but you pretty much got to say 30 millimeters okay for the gear selector cable it's saying if we put it in the center hole we get 27.5 if we go to the outer hole 35 millimeters inside 20 millimeters so i'm going to go to the inner hole i think that's going to be enough to give us a gear we then also need to come to the back side here because in order to go into forward gear i need to pull the cable with the other end set up what i see as correctly this was a little bit too far back it does have a detent in the gearbox you can kind of hear it click so I'm just going to wind this one out a little bit. And you can see the cable is actually protruding from here. So we know we've got loads of threads. No issue there. Once I had the controls installed, I took Renko over to Brooklyn to give Carl a hand bringing a load of materials over to the island. They're going to take a little bit of getting used to, but I actually quite like it. stuff with Carl also helped uh, correct the list on Renko. I also just want to say thanks to all the people that sent messages concerned about the uh, boat fire explosion we had in Brooklyn. Um, yeah, very nasty accident. So if you do have inboard petrol, just uh, definitely be very very careful with it so uh, thoughts with the people involved in that accident and thanks to people who got involved on the day and helped out having a uh, bit of a day of fabrication home today I am making at the moment some pipes with some weight antis and then some extra down pipes that I'm going to use to run wires such as for the fridge on the back deck so rather than having a cable gland that's going to get submerged at sea I don't mind using them on the wheelhouse roof for example but here I want something even more waterproof so this will bring it up right off the deck cable will come up and down inside a conduit as well so it doesn't chafe making three of those all up there's the other two also made a metal frame which has just had some phosphoric acid on it better wipe the excess off that's the frame that's going to house the timber bench that steve from vintage restorations australia made me then i'm going to hinge that so it can lift up that's going over the fridge here's the steel frame i made for the bench it goes the other way around pre-drilled painted now i'm going to clamp it down onto the board put screws in underneath then we'll flip it back over I'm not going to do the hinge arrangement now because everything has to come out of there so I can repair the back deck it's sort of uh, the uh, next big bit of steel work to attack so let's get this uh, clamp screwed up flip it over that's in fine okay flipped it over I'm actually just going to run the flap disc along this edge because people will be sitting on this bench and I figure, you know, let's just take that sharp edge off more linseed oil on top and then uh, ready to go I oiled the edges again before I put it into the frame so really we're just getting the new bevel and the top again Purist probably wished I'd got like a spoke shave out or something. The old flap disc is much faster. All right, the floor of the wheelhouse has now had 
uh, lot of wire brushing, then the Galmet ionized rust converter, some of the Altex two part primer, and some epoxy black top coat now. Next step is glue and the carpet that uh, Pete and I cut out. All right, here is the carpet in. I uh, did actually film gluing it down, but I lost that footage, sorry. Double shame because uh, it was actually clean. Now it's two days old and covered in stains already, but that's just me. What I did was lay it down without any glue, peeled it back, did contact on one part on the floor, let it go for a bit, folded it back, then I could be on this half and do the same over here. So that was my process, went pretty well. I just managed to pick up this case of drill bits and drop absolutely every single one of them into the bilge. Oh joy. Next job was to start making a pedestal to put a comfy seat on in the wheelhouse before we start making this really long trek up north. All right, just gonna finish this up in situ because the wheelhouse floor slopes off to the side and to the back, which is obviously how this is built to give us a level top. So it's kind of the perfect place to finish it up because it sits right. The skirting board in the wheelhouse is 20 millimeters tall. So I'm gonna cut the back of this 20 millimeters up from the base here and that should give us the you know the little notch to have the skirting board run behind it All right, first coat of paint's on. When I get home, I might see if I can find some, just some simple sort of, you know, woodworking putty, log up the screw heads, give it a light sand before we do the second coat. Anyway, sun's going down, time to go home. Let's give this a really light sand and get some more paint on it. Nice day for drying. While I had the uh, paint out for the seat, I painted up this bit of plywood that's going to be the mounting board for the freshwater pump. Can't bolt through because I'm going to glue the board to the bulkhead, or to the transom actually. Alright, there we go. Let's go get this in position so that it's one less thing to trip over. Oh, and as a bonus for all those people that uh, always want me to do more painting, I used up the rest of the tin of paint on the uh, engine bay hatch. Next time, not promising anything, I might even sand it before I paint. Okay, paint it up. And to some degree, <laughs> trued up so it's vaguely parallel to the uh, Upright panels. What I need to do now is get our seat base on in the correct position. Steve's he might actually have to move, which is a bit tragic. Probably come in a smidge. With Renko, every millimeter counts. It really does. Okay. I'll now measure this to make sure it's actually square. Three. 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 Just put them all in loosely until they're uh, all started. All right, I am out of washers for these bolts, unfortunately. So I'll get some tomorrow or whenever. Thinking what I may do is uh, actually make an entire sort of backing plate for the underside just to make it stronger again. So washers on top, backing plate on the bottom, nylocks after that. 
So, here it is in all its glory. I'm thinking in this space, it'd be nice to have some drink holders, either low or sunk down into the top, which is very doable. I can't have them sticking up, obviously, because when you swing the chair around, they'd be in the way, and you want to be able to swing the chair right around 90 degrees, so you can either watch a movie at night or sit at an extension I'm going to make for this desk and use the laptop and edit videos while you're cruising. Next job is to install a bracket for the catch can that a viewer named Pete uh, fabricated and sent to me. So I am thinking we are going to put it here-ish and I am actually just going to drill and tap this uh, runner here using a combination drill and tap that another viewer sent me. That was pretty easy. Maybe a total convert. All right. Done. Let's put loads of grease in these newly tapped holes to prevent corrosion and seizing. Pete sort of surprised me by sending this and uh, got the dimensions from the videos, having a bit of a guess. It's actually longer than the catch can. All right, I reckon that looks pretty good. Certainly very nice to have it finally secured. And for those of you who are interested, I've been running about 50 hours now and that's what was in the catch can. So not very much at all. Thank you, Adrian, for that. And thank you, Pete, for that. Ron from the island, who lives near Carl, made me this beautiful timber cover for all the wires, the bare wires that were coming down here. The idea is we're going to adhere this section, but we can screw the panel off if we need to. So thank you very much, Ron. It looks incredible. Last thing I'm going to do is get a square out oh, and attach a little inclinometer. Oh, <laughs> here's the man again. <laughs> Come in, you got coffee. You're welcome. A little bit of double-sided tape. Very convenient. I bet you if I left my trolley here, someone would steal it. Yeah, exactly. Just not your rubbish. <laughs> Got a little bit of a list. Not too bad, but a little bit there. As well as doing the work on Renko, I've also been taking every opportunity I can to work with Adrian and do a little bit of a Detroit Diesel apprenticeship with him. Yep. So there's another injector down there. So there's another set of valves there. Yep. Yeah. And there's another set of valves down here, so you get that injector. And but you can be at a point where your injectors halfway down. Obviously, your tools. You yeah. Know you you know we need absolutely. Tool. Yeah, you'll yeah. know. Yeah. Like, yeah, you'll know yeah. straight away. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. 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 Where, where it'll end up on the profile of the cam. Yep. When the valves start going down, is where it'll stay for a long time. Right. Yep. So you've got plenty so of the duration, duration there. Yeah. Gotcha. To grab the injector and set it. Yeah. Gotcha. That's cool. All right, and and just remember that little hole sometimes fills with oil and becomes yep. a... Uh, yeah, hydrolock in it. Yeah. The last addition for this video is an MV Renko sign made from timber that another viewer called Barry sent me. Just been putting a bit of clear coat on to make sure it survives in the weather. I think that looks pretty cool. Welcome to the wheelhouse, MV Renko. Barry also sent me a second one to take up to Damien Jess to go on to Brewpeg. So I will keep this on Renko and we will deliver it in person. Well, thanks for watching. Turned out to be a crazy busy week this week, which is why the video is a bit late. Lots more happened than's in this video, but as always, I'm trying to group them into themes so that, you know, the videos make a bit more sense. All right, well, take care. I'll catch you soon. See ya. Not happy with your arrival no. at all. Shh. Eat your banana. Is that the mesmer there? I don't think you even like banana, do you? You're more of a seed guy. You do. You love banana. <laughs>